So hello everybody, it's Pomito CX, and it's been a long time coming yet again. I think uh, I think about it been a month since our last stream again. Is yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, so it's been about a month, and uh, the last month has basically been me writing a Zelda book. I've been writing real hard and working on it real hard with Poe and Tony and Reed. Do you have the a guys. slideshow? No, sadly not. And um, we been working on that real hard, and we finally sent it out to the printers the other day. Monday. Monday, and we there's still a whole bunch of work stuff to do with the book, but the writing is done. Mm -hmm. If people would like to sign up, yeah, like um, can you send them the link. Yes, if you want to sign up right here, it's at uh, sign up to be notified of the pre-order. Pre-orders aren't open yet because we're still working on finalizing the pre-order bonuses. There's yeah. going to be a lot. All right, there it so, is. So before we begin, uh, I want to show maybe not get my feet. Ooh. So here's what we're gonna be doing. We're we'll playing. We're we'll playing Zelda. This is Japanese Zelda one. This is how it came on the yeah. Famicom Disk System. Up until you know it's uh, cartridge release. But this is how Japanese uh, players played Zelda, like '86. Yep. Yep. We got a nice booklet here. Does this one have the stickers? No, the one with the stickers is at the office. This has some stickers in it. Yeah. It's pretty cool stuff. Looks like we got uh, Link's Awakening here. <laughs> for whatever reason, I have like eight copies of Link's Awakening <laughs> in different formats in the house. I don't even like the game that much. And then, uh, so here's the Famicom disk system that we have and the Famicom. It's modded. Our, our modded Famicom. Um, so we bought the Famicom disk system, I don't know, like half a year ago for my, for my book. We never plugged it in. We never tried it. And just tonight we tried it, and we... Oh, Meta Man, thanks for following. You got 32 tomato points, and you transported to level 8. Um, so we didn't try it out until just now. And for a long time, we, none of the games would load. Yeah, we couldn't get the games to load. <laughs> we were like, no! Um, so we think we got it working now. If it turns out we can't get it to work, we're just going to play some random Famicom game. Yeah, we'll stick a Famicom game in there. Yeah. But we think it works. All right, so do you want to... All right, is it here? Uh, it's that one, yeah. Gosh, this unprotected disc. Okay, don't don't plug it in yet. Right. Let me um, do a thing here. It's kind of kind of crappy, but here we go. Oh. So All right. I can push the disc in. Yeah. Now Turn on the this. button. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um. Oops. Did it. Oh, it loaded! Here, let's reset it. Okay. There we go. It's family. It's gonna sound like uh, Pomito CX. We stole it from that. Yeah, so uh, the modifications you can see, the two controllers... Oh, let me <laughs> point here. These? This is the mod. This is why we wanted this. One of the reasons. You can take these controllers out and they're longer than the typical Famicom controllers. This blue light is just also a nice addition, and also there's AV cords in the back here, so that we can hook in. The normal Famicom doesn't have this, so this is a, what is allowing us to stream, and we wanted it for all of these reasons. Okay, so I will turn that off. All right, let's go. Okay. Here. So one of these days, we're considering setting up like a steady webcam on us when we get the room. Nice. Wow, it's a mess in here. <laughs> I know. Alright. So our goal for today is kind of just to have fun and see if this was going to work. Um, actually bring it up because we're going to have to flip the screen in a second. Or flip the disc. Flip the disc, okay. Um, not okay. just yet though. Yeah, yeah, the AV cables do make it look a little weird. Yeah, you can hear it sound different too. Mm -hmm. In, in my Zelda book, I just I cover the topic of audio and like uh, I even include like different opinions from Japanese fans and American fans and or English speaking fans. Please look up the manual. <laughs> it says to turn to side B. Yeah. All right. All right. So let me turn on the little webcam. Okay. Now how do I do this? Like, um, do I turn the game off or do I just eject the disc? I've never done this. You just press the eject button there. Okay. This is her first time ever doing this. Says, please wait. Wow. I hope it loads. 
Oh, Wait. oh, yes. whoa, somebody died Check like. Check it out. Some, so wait, where are these saves held? On the disc. The disc itself and yeah. not the Famicom disc system? I assume it's the disc, I'm pretty sure. Because like when uh, they dumped a prototype uh -huh. for this, it was just on the disc itself that they okay. saved. Okay, we're such noobs, I don't even know. I should know this stuff, I should be a Zelda 1 expert by now. Let me get the chat over here so I can chat with the chat. Did this person die 255 times? I think so, or they cheated. I think they cheated. His name is E. Yeah. <laughs> So we got E. Oh no, I don't want to delete any of them. We got Naoki and Kaoru. Oh, hmm. the disc holds the saves. Thank you, Dracozone. Kill mode. <laughs> People are flipping. Yeah, kill mode. If you guys like this stuff, definitely check out the book. Also, I was going to say, uh, if you guys find any typos in the book, you get one tomato point for letting us know. Oh, okay. Who are we deleting? Are we going to delete the middle one? This one, yeah, it's the least far. Okay. I'm sorry, Naoki. I'm killing no, you now. We just we just started Fruity Val. We're playing this on a right. real family come to system. Everyone pour something out for Naoki. Pour one out. <laughs> yeah, somehow their disc wound up in our house. I Aww, killed them. Oh, he died. Alright, so we need to name it... Um, okay, first name to start with uh, C. First name that starts with a C, we'll name it this. Okay. <laughs> I want some tea. So with the book, oh, the book isn't out of the way though. We still have a lot to do. Um, Cole, C O L E. All right, Cole. Who's that from? Grand Torino. Grand Thanks. Trino. Crap. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Cole. <laughs> Cole. So you just localize Naoki in the coal. Please wait. It's cl it's cl clicking and clunking over there right now. Please wait. So there's load times in Zelda. Yep. Isn't that weird? Like, I don't know. I thought like like load times were a PlayStation era thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or, maybe, or you know like also personal computers and stuff. But well, even then, like um, I played a lot of games on. Um, a drive floppy disks, you know, like a three and a quarter inch. Yeah. None of them really loaded that much, unless you're playing a big one, like the five and a half inch one. Yeah. Oh, whoa, this controller is bad. Is it? Oh, crap. And also, this is the only controller I can work with our. because it's modded. But we've played it with this controller before. Uh, I guess so. It's just so bad right now. Are you sure? Are you sure it's not Control like it. Famicom? Oh, the delay. Yeah. It's not. I don't think it's the delay. It's just very rough. Oh, I'm gonna die a lot. So kind of what I want to do today is I don't really have a set goal on beating the game, but I guess we could if we want. Um, there's a couple things I want to try for some of the books, book-related stuff. We can see which version we yeah, have. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, so there's snap. so there's multiple versions of the Japanese game, like of the disc system game. Um, I, I want to see which one we have. Um, I'm hoping it's the original one because then we can do a special trick in it. There's also some Famicom disk system only tricks you can do. I can only remember one off the top of my head. Two we can off. Finally, do Paul's voice. Oh yeah, we can do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna die a lot. <laughs> That's fine. We can trade off then, um, and we could both play. Here, let's do. Where is it? Here we go. Whoa. Never forget Naoki. <laughs> the spirit of Naoki curses your controller, yeah. <laughs> so you, um, you're just going straight to level one? Yeah, I want to get... What's your plan? Um, I want to get the boomerang first. Okay. And this trick works in this version. You can just come, go, leave and come back. So when you go between levels like this, the, the system clunks as it loads. And yeah. I guess Japanese fans are really, you know, really nostalgic about that. It's really weird. Because it kind of almost feels like when you're going down the stairs, you hear the clicking and clunking, like going downstairs. Kind of sounds like that. I think even Iwata even said something about that in one of those Iwata asks mm -hmm. or whatever. There it is. The first door is unlocked. <laughs> it's so weird. People talking about Dennis. <laughs> yep, they're talking about Dennis again. Dennis is almost uh, a year old now. <laughs> um, DN, uh, let me scroll up here. They were um, 
offering some good advice about discs and stuff. Ah. So then I'm playing on hard mode because for whatever reason, uh, there's some, like the controller is messed up. Yeah. Uh, Dian says that loading is why developers stopped making FDS games and instead started making their own chips for larger games. Oh, okay. And he continued and said it was cheaper and players could write games to discs. It was meant to be both cheaper and more convenient, but the copyright protection was quickly bypassed and the NES space restrictions were very quickly bypassed with mapping tricks. Oh no, wait. He might, he might have been talking about Metroid. Wait. I got confused. Sorry. <laughs> So I'm going to... Uh, I can't remember if there's a key in this room. Doesn't the skeleton have one of them? Not in this I room. I don't see it yet. I need a heart, yes. Not a skeleton, what are they called? Stealthos. Stealthos, yeah. So we're actually playing our disk system finally. We I was so worried it was... We didn't in the game, did we? Um, I, I almost know. did, because there's not a whole lot to say about them. Yeah, I just couldn't remember. I didn't remember. So the, the book is uh, 208 pages long, more if you count in like the other weird pages. Yep. It is a, is a big book. Hey, we'll take your book questions. This is an impromptu stream like all of our streams. And uh, should we talk about the book a little bit? Yeah, we'll talk about it, yeah. Like, we'll probably be talking about it a lot. We hope to do some streams, like, to help build up hype. Maybe we might do some board game streams, too. Actually, this, so this guy in Japanese, he says uh, you can't use arrows without money or whatever, something like that. He doesn't talk about peninsulas at all. <laughs> so what is left to do book-wise? All right, so um, we sent the book to the printers, um, and they're gonna like print out some like test version for us. They're gonna send us the test version, and we're gonna look at it, make sure all the pages are right, everything's how we want it, and then we say, okay, this is good, or like, no, we need to fix these pages. And then uh, they'll go start printing the actual things. I don't know how long it's going to take, but... Um, probably we'll start doing pre-orders in a few weeks. Mm. Um, but you can go here to be notified of when those pre-orders open. And then uh, while like the books are being printed and stuff, we're working on the, uh, on the extras. And one of the extras is going to be like a 30-40 page booklet. Um, and how you can... I mean, I, like, you explained that so well today, Paul. Can you explain that? Okay. Um, well, first of all, let me answer... I think Pickle Blossom has asked us a couple times, are we going to be playing Yokai Watch 2? Um, at the moment, we are super burned out on Yokai Watch. We do want to beat Yokai Watch 1 before yeah, the game to. is released in English, we're going which to. is November 6th. But as for Yokai Watch 2, we'll play it eventually, but not right away. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, the passport... Um, that's what we're calling it. We don't have an official name for it. No, that's what I want to call it. The Passport to the Legend uh, of Zelda? Yeah, something okay, like Okay, so let me bring up what I wrote because I don't <laughs> remember what I wrote today. Right, so basically that we're going to make a little booklet and it's kind of like a companion to the main Legends of Localization book. Or you can um, possibly just order it on, on its own if you just want to. Yeah, it. it'll be available on its own too. Um, and it will help you get into the game into the Japanese game. You don't, like, it'll explain, like, all the different terms and stuff, so you can okay. play the Japanese game. Go I've ahead. got it. So, the book, the little booklet, The Passport to the Legend of Zelda, will teach you Japanese. It'll help you play this game in Japanese. And there's going to be an, a special little part that will help you search for merchandise on Japanese websites. So... Not, not, just, not just that. Like Not just, just that, but that's, all, that's what I could remember. So what else is it going to do? It'll help you um, just learn how to, you know, search the Japanese side of things, uh -huh. of the internet for like Zelda or whatever you want. Oh, the internet in general. Okay, yeah. Not just but, merch. but merchandise is a good thing. Too. I got excited about merch. Yeah. So anyway, and I said that this is this little booklet will unlock doors, just many doors that are just totally closed off to us who don't know Japanese at all. So it'll help you unlock those doors, and you can experience your favorite games in a new way because we want to do more than one passport. Okay, so you guys can hear the sound. It sounds different. It does. Yeah. So that is the big pre-order bonus we're working on. There's it'll, a couple it'll, more. So it'll be it'll be free if you pre-order the book. Uh, you can uh, otherwise you can buy it on its own. Let me repeat that. The passport will be free if you pre-order the book. Otherwise, it's going to be available for purchase. So get in on them pre-orders, dudes. You want it. Damn it. Sounds hot. 
<laughs> um, well, I, I like should... the way it sounds in this one. Nice, nice, you did it. To the victory. Okay, so I'm gonna do my boomerang trick. I wanna see if I can get it to work right. Um, so back when I barely knew Japanese, I had uh, just finished Earthbound. And I really wanted to play the Japanese version for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, and I, I kind of wanted to learn Japanese through it or whatever. I think if I had a book that explained like what all the terms are and like how to get through the game and uh, teach you a little bit of stuff along the way, I think I would have really enjoyed that. So I'm trying to make this book along that way, along those lines, mm -hmm. but for Zelda. And maybe like with every book that we'll do. Oops. I'll do something like that. So here's some here's some neat information. We talk about audio in the book, mm -hmm. and uh, you even went in and you got opinions from people, from mm -hmm. Japanese people yeah. and other people who have played the game about the way the music yeah. and the sounds sound. Right. And Dn was saying, "Oh, that boss sound! Wow, it's still bad even on hardware." <laughs> that was a huge. He said that was a huge improvement in the Western version. So Dn yeah. prefers the Western.